Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for coming this presentation. Uh, my name is Sangdu Yoon, and I'm a research scientist at Neighbor Clova. Uh, my background is computer vision and machine learning. So it is uh, my pleasure to have a talk about how to make the models strong and robust. In this talk, I will present that how to solve the computer vision uh, tasks using deep learning. And also, I will present the ways to train uh, better and stronger deep models. This talk will not include the detailed mathematics and proofs, so it is probably easy for the people who are already familiar with deep learning or computer vision. But I will give some practical tips for training deep networks. Okay, these days, artificial intelligence and deep learning have rapidly developed and solved many computer vision problems. For example, image recognition, object detection, or semantic segmentation are now a common problem, and their performance seems great. Also, in neighbor and line services, artificial intelligence and deep learning are also very important. In our global OCR team, we developed text detection and text recognition method to read the text in the image. Also, Neighbor Smart Lens, which is developed by Global Vision Team, enables image searching and shopping item searching with a very good performance. In this situation, our research goal is to improve the performance of these applications. More specifically, our goal is to provide more strong fundamental technology to these service teams. This is what I will talk about. First, I will address what is image recognition, which is a fundamental computer vision task. And then, beyond the image recognition, I will talk about what is, need, what is needed and what is important to apply my own task. Finally, I will introduce our recent research, which is a simple and very effective training strategy. And this makes the team model very strong and strong and robust in a simple way. Okay, so let's move on to the deep CNN-based image recognition. Let me first describe what is uh, the image recognition. We assume that we have a recognition model which takes an input image and predicts its category label. In this example, the recognition model takes this dog image, and its output, predicted output, is also be a dog. Surely, if we want to make a smart recognition model, then we need lots of training data, which is consists of many training images and training labels. Then, what is deep CNN? Uh, CNN means convolutional neural network. Convolution operation works like this, where the convolution kernel extracts features from the input image. Then the convolution operations are stacked multiple times. Then we call it deep CNN. Uh, deep CNN is well known to have a good performance on various machine learning areas. 
CNN was firstly introduced around 1990, but its golden era was started in 2012, where the AlexNet was firstly introduced. AlexNet used eight layer CNN and firstly construct a deep neural network, and it beats the previous non deep learning method with a large gap. The right, si right side graph is the performance of modern deep CNN models on ImageNet challenging dataset. After that, VGNet and ResNet were proposed having more than 100 layers with a great performance improvement. Okay, we have seen the development of the image recognition or image classification, and it looks good, but what if my own task is, or my service is not a classification problem? If we want more complicated computer vision tasks, such as object detection or segmentation, or fine-grained image classifications. So let's see the real-world problem to apply computer vision to my own task. Before that, we should understand what is learned in the deep network. It is too difficult to understand what is exactly going on in the deep network but some previous analysis observed that each layer of deep network operates differently. For example, the first layer extracts the co color or pixels intensity of the input image. And then the next layer extracts the edges or textures from the first layer's output. On the deeper layer, more abstracted information such as shape of objects are received. At each layer, we call this information to a feature. So at the final layer, from the given last feature, the final decision is made, and it will be a dog class in this example. We call the convolution layers to extract a useful feature uh, to as a feature extractor. The feature extractor is trying to encode useful information of an input image during a training phase. Towards a new task beyond the image recognition, we remove the final layers and use, use the last picture extractor. And let's say the new task is that finding the region of person in an image. For this task, final layers are newly attached. And their output will be uh, the bounding box coordinates, such as the location of top left and bottom right of the per person in an image. Even though the new task and the original task uh, are quite different, but the picture to solve the problems uh, will be similar. That is why the picture extractor is reused for the new task. Finally, the feature extractor and the new final layers will be trained using the target-specific data. This learning framework is called transfer learning, which means the knowledge of the feature extractor from the original image recognition task was transferred to the new task. We also call the feature extractor to backbone of the network. Training backbone network is also called free training stage. And also, training the whole network with the target-specific data is called fine-tuning stage. The standard framework for the transfer learning is like this. First, we prepare a large-scale training data. Usually, we use ImageNet dataset 
uh, which has more than 1 million images and 1,000 classes. And then we select a deep model to fit our purpose. The selected model can be a lightweight model for mobile devices, or, uh, or the selected model can be a heavy deep model for the bunch of GPU machines. The selected model is trained by the large scale data set, and this step is called free training. After that, the free trained model is modified to the target task. Usually, the last layers are uh, modified for the specific purpose. And lastly, the full model is fine tuned with the target specific data. All the steps are important, but among these steps, we consider the pre training stage, which makes the backbone network. The reason is that the strong backbone network directly affects the performance of transfer learning task. We can see this example, and as you can see, the difference between two detectors, uh, the left one is a detector using weak backbone network, and the right example is a detector's research when using a strong backbone. The image net pre-training accuracy uh, between the weak and strong backbone is uh, one to two percent and seems not that large, but the gap uh, of the detection results are quite large. That means the strong backbones, uh, the object detector using strong backbone can capture uh, the smaller objects and also more complicated objects in the images. <coughs> as, you, uh, as you have seen the people's slides, Using strong backbone is critical for the transfer, ta transfer learning task. Then, how to make a strong backbone or how to train a strong backbone network in the pre-training stage? Uh, there are three ways to improve the backbone's performance. The first one is use uh, the bigger size of pre-training data. However, we already use ImageNet dataset, uh, which contains more than 1 million images. So gathering more images more than the ImageNet dataset is too expensive. So it, uh, it is uh, hard to be our answer. The second approach is to use a bigger size of deep model. Yeah. Of course, really, Using the bigger size of model can improve the backbone's performance, but the model size is directly affect the memory uses or inference time. So uh, using the bigger size model is uh, or not gonna be the always the answers. And third way is actually uh, our uh, research interest is to apply a better training strategy. Unlike the previous two options, the training strategy does not spend more gathering, uh, gathering cost or training resources. So we uh, focus on to this uh, training strategy part. So, a tr proper training strategy can improve the model's performance. Our goal is to maximize the performance using the same model and the same data set. Usually, when we train a deep model, training loss will decrease as we want to, but sometimes the test loss will increase as training iteration goes by. And this situation is called error fitting. Overfitting is frequently happened, and a uh, proper training strategy can solve this problem. If the overfitting problem is solved, then the test loss will decrease as we want to. This situation is called 
a well generalization, the well generalized case, and the backbone model's performance is expected to be more improved. Okay, let's move on to the training strategy part. Uh, let me first introduce a traditional approach. Uh, this, this is named uh, of data augmentation. And data augmentation is a well-known method to prevent overfitting. Uh, this method decreases the gap between training and test data uh, by augmenting training data in a various way. Yeah, for example, the training data can be uh, flipped or resized or rotated randomly while the target label is maintained as the same. And we use this transformed image and the label when we train a deep model. This transforms encourages the deep network's generalization ability since the deep model never see the exactly same training data at the training time. Another way of pre preventing or pitting regularization methods are also widely used. Regularizing deep model to prevent, uh, it, it prevents the model to be overpit or too constrained on some certain neuron. And there's many methods such as batch normalization or weight decay and dropout for regularization. For example, of a dropout, uh, dropout method, it randomly zeroed out the intermediate features neuron. Even some neurons are zeroed out. The prediction of the model should be the target class label. This method prevents too much concentrate on a certain neuron, and this leads to uh, good generalization ability. Uh, okay, the recently, a regional dropout strategy is proposed, and which is called a cutout method. It randomly removes the image regions like this, and also this, and all this, and this makes uh, the model more robust to the occlusion. This simple and intuitive method can improve the generalization ability and also improve the robustness to the occluded objects in images. However, we concern this method as it cannot utilize the full image region. The, de the deleted region does not have any, inf any information, which seems to be inefficient. Let's see the another recent method, mix-up regularizer. When you have a dog image and each label, and also we have a cat image and each label, then the mix-up method interpolates the two images, and also interpolate their label. In this example, the interpolation ratio was 0 0.5, so the new training label will be dog 0 0.5 and cat 0 0.5. This method makes the model robust to uncertain samples and to have a good generalization ability. Also, unlike the cutout method, in use the poor image region and is the strong point of this method. However, the generated image by the mix of method is locally not realistic. That means, uh, let's look at these small patches of the mix of samples. And you can see this um, example has some kind of ghosting effects. And this is, uh, un, uh, we, we uh, guess this is an unnatural and unrealistic for the test images. So we guess this, time, this kind of problem may limit the performance of the model. Okay. Now, 
Uh, here's our method, uh, and our method's name is cut mix. And uh, let me briefly explain our method. So we have a dog image, and also we have a cat image. And we cut some region of the cat image and paste it into the dog image. And uh, the label is changed to a dog 0.5 and cut cat 0.5, which is decided by the uh, pixel ratio of each image. And again, we name this method as a cut mix. A cut mix is a simple cut and paste method. The cutting region is selectively randomly, like this, and, and like this, and also this. And as you can see, the, uh, the pixel ratio with each patches are uh, uh, changes, so the target label are also be changed. And this makes the backbone robust to the both occlusion and the uncertain samples. We presented comics at ICCB 2019 as an oral presentation. Here's our team members working for Comex. Okay, let me briefly summarize the key summary the key, key difference with the previous method. Okay, first, unlike the cut out method, Comex uses the full image regions. Also, unlike the mix-up method, Comix makes a more locally realistic image patches. And finally, Comix is easy to implement and very simple. It only needs 20 lines of PyTorch code. Our intuition of Comix is presented here. The original image classification problem is to answer the class of the input image. But when using the cut mix example, the team model should aware of what objects are in the image. That means the network should predict the both object, the cat and a dog, is in the, this image. And also, a dog and the cat is uh, located disjointly, so the network learns the cat is in the upper left region and the dog is in the left region. Moreover, the correct answer is the dog 0.6 and cat 0.4. That means the portion of the dog and the cat in the image I also should be aware uh, of by the network. That means the network should estimate the portion of each, each class and each images. In this way, the simple classification problem is changed to a complicated multitask problem by our simple comix uh, method. And then more deeply, uh, we want to analyze what does the model can learn with Comix. To analyze the impact of Comix, we utilize the heat map visualization. The heat map visualization shows where the model sees to recognize the object in an image. For example, the to recognize this Saint Bernard in this image, the model mainly sees the head of the dog. The to recognize this poodle image, the model wants to see the overall region of the poodle dog. So given these two Saint Bernard and poodle images, we prepare some augmented image by mix up and cut out and cut mix. For the heat map of St. Bernard, the cutout image and comic set image actually do not have the St. Bernard's head. 
So the heat may be spot on the belly of the Saint Bernard in the augmented imaging. However, for the food uh, of uh, for the heat map of the food, actually the cut out image does not have any food uh, region, food information or food uh, images region. So uh, it have it has no response, but Comix has a clearly uh, has a region about of the food's head. So the heat map response is uh, exactly on the Poodle's head on the Comix image. How about the comparison with the mixer? The heat map of Saint Bernard. It's shown like this, uh, and as you can see, the mix-up and comix image of the uh, heat heat map uh, indicates the belly of the dog. However, for the poodle heat map, mix-up shows very confused re response because the mix-up image is layered, and two dogs are interpolated, so they are cannot be distinguishable. On the other hand, comics sample clearly have distinctive heat maps for the two classes. And we can say that comics makes the model be aware of two different classes at the same time. And this makes model much stronger. This is the overall comparison results, and we can see that COMEX has the both advantages of two methods uh, of the mix-up and cut-out methods. Okay, let's move on to the experimental research of COMEX. We verified COMEX on ImageNet dataset, which is most popular and most widely used for benchmarking the classification ability. We consider the other data augmentation and regularization method also with the same baseline, LegendF50. Among them, COMIX shows the best performance improvement where the increase month from the baseline is 2% point and also outperforms other uh, similar methods uh, such as data augmentation or uh, regularization method. I guess someone who are not familiar with ImageNet dataset, and they guess the two percent points of ImageNet is not uh, is not that impressive. But the, this improvement can be obtained by the architectural change. That means to uh, if we want to obtain two percent point increase month on uh, ImageNet, then we, uh, we add 100 layers onto the Legendet 50. That means we should change the Legendet 50 to Legendet 1 50 2. This graph shows uh, comics works consistently well when the network goes deeper, uh, when we use Legendet 1 1 or Legendet 2 1 1. We also performed our method on the object localization task, whose goal is to capture the object region as tight as possible of the object bounding boxes. Simple comparison with mix-up and call-out. Uh, as, you, as you can see, COMIX uh, performs the localization ability. And in, the, in this qualitative uh, research, uh, uh, the COMIX can capture as tight as the bounding box uh, of the object region in this image. And we verified the comics on the transfer learning task. Maybe this is the most important experiment because our motivation is started from to make a strong backbone. We selected the object detection and image captioning task for the transfer learning. 
our training protocol for the transfer learning is like this. We first pre-train pre -train the backbone network on ImageNet data set. Then the backbone network is applied to the ta specific target task and fine-tune on the target task. After fine-tuning, we uh, observe the gap between the two uh, trained network. The one is uh, use the baseline backbone, and, and the other one is uh, the backbone using the commix. And we note that our experiments only change the backbone of the model, and the other uh, things are remained the same. To see the impact of the backbone network for the transfer learning, we perform the experiments with these, uh, these backbones. And also we used a uh, data set, uh, Pascal, VUC detection data set using SSD detector and fast ICN detector. And also we used MS Coco data set and we, at this time, we used past ICN and detector. And finally, we used the image captioning task using the NIC image captioning method. And the final overall score is like this. As you can see, the backbone pre-trained with comics are performs other baselines. And at this time, I want to notice that the 2% point improvement on MS Coco data set is very impressive because the gap, uh, this two, the gap between uh, the comics and the baseline method is obtained by uh, changing of the backbone network from the uh, ResNet 50 to ResNet 101 in the architectural way. In short, simply changing or simply choosing comics pre-trained model brings a great performance improvement on the transfer learning task. Here I will present some frequently asked questions. These questions are asked by many people when I'm presenting at ICCB. First, what if there's no objects in the cropped patch? Sometimes the cropped patch does not have any objects, but only have some backgrounds or some parts of the objects. But we assume that the background or the part of object, part of object, also have unusual information for the classification. And our conjecture is empirically proved by uh, the, our ImageNet uh, experiments. The second question is, what if more than two images are commixed? We tried three or poor images per comics, but the improvement were almost the same. So we keep the two image comics. And lastly, what if, uh, no, the lastly, the, the comics needs an additional training course? Uh, the, my, our answer is the comics uh, do, do not need uh, the additional course that much because it, need, it only needs uh, cut and paste uh, process, so it is very negligible uh, compared to the whole training process. I will conclude this talk and give some message. First, for many computer vision tasks, training a strong classifier is very important. And our team's goal is developing a strong classifier to be used as a backbone. And, and next, from our recently proposed method, Conmix, if someone needs to train a strong and robust classifier, then I, suggest, I want to suggest that uh, apply Conmix regularization to the classifier. Conmix is very simple and intuitive and easy to implement. Conmix are so very high, a great potential on transfer learning, so if someone needs a better pre-training model for transfer learning and just download our pre-trained model with comics for transfer learning task. 
our source code and the pre-trained model, pre-trained models are available online. Oh, sorry. Okay. And you can access using this URL and use this QR code. And yeah, thank you for attention. Thank you.